All right, what's up guys? It is, so what time is it? It's 7.51 at night. This is my usual as working on night shift. This is what you usually do. I'm about to go work out. Then we're gonna talk about whether or not becoming a nurse practitioner is a good idea or not. Oh, hey, what's up guys? So I just finished my workout and um, what I wanna talk about today is the uh, getting into like the nurse practitioner and whether or not you should become a nurse practitioner or if you, after you finish your BSN and you want to go like me and get your MSN, like mine is focused on education. Other people do it and they can go and do like nurse anesthe uh, anesthesiologist or uh, CRNA, nursing administration. You know, so there's different routes when you want to get that post-secondary uh, education. But you really need to do your research if you're, if you're really serious about doing it because um, you don't want to... You know, you don't want to spend two and a half, three years working on your uh, master's and then find out that you don't want to do it anymore, you know. Um, but the good thing is, like, say, like me with education, with a master's in edu nursing education, is you can still go back and get your nurse practitioner or whatever. But, yeah, so, you know, you want to do your research and understand, like, for me, everybody's like, well, you're not going to make a lot of money doing uh, teaching this and that. And, I mean, you make pretty decent. It's not terrible. You know you're not going to make as much as like a nurse practitioner or somebody like that in the clinical side, but it's still not bad money. And I just like the aspect of teaching. I like communicating with people. Not everybody's like that. You know, I understand that. And I think that you need to really understand what your motivation is, what you want to do, and really understand that. You know, I know, um, I think it's Kanan Brown. He's going back to do uh, either nurse practitioner or PA or something like that. But, you know, he's thought about it and that's what he wants to do. So it's really just up to you, your personality. If I had to say anything, I would say do your research. And there's some pros and cons about doing nurse practitioner versus physician assistant and all that. I think Kanan was talking about doing a PA and everybody was like, well, why are you going to do PA when you can just do nurse practitioner? And, you know, there's everybody's personality is different. You know, some people want to work more autonom autonomously and some people want to you know stay on the nursing side it's it's really just a preference that's why i say do your research and understand your personality because you know when you get that when you finish up that's going to be your lifelong job so you might want to you know do a little research on that also i did see that they're going to be passing a bill in virginia that lets uh, nurse practitioners practice autonomously after they've had five years of clinical experience which I think that's a really good idea because with so many people getting older now, especially with the baby boom gener boomers and their generation getting older, there's just not enough docs to go around and to treat all these people. So you're going to need these nurse practitioners and these PAs to fill that void. You know, having uh, nurse practitioners that can work autonomously after five years is going to help kind of fill that void. Now, I know that uh, medical association, I think, or physicians, one of those associations that are like lobbying for physicians they're all against it because they see nurse practitioners as kind of moving in on their territory so to speak and they don't like it but what they don't understand or they may understand it but they just totally against it is that there's not enough doctors or not enough physicians to fill that void and to actually treat these patients so we're going to need to do something so that's a really good step by virginia to uh, allow that at least to start that process because they've been talking about this I think I saw in there since the 70s about letting nurse practitioners work autonomously but the they got a lot of pushback from the physicians well I can understand that in the 70s 80s and even the 90s but now with the you know the health care laws are going to be changing you can mark my word I don't care if it's Donald Trump or Obama as an office health care laws are changing one way or the other and we're going to be uh, exposed to a lot of patients in the next 10 years, especially in the next 10, year, 10 to 15 years. I don't, I don't even think we've even just scraped the surface of the amount of patients that are going to be, especially coming into like long-term care and some of that, that area, some geriatrics, because that's going to be a huge, huge uh, population explosion, patient population explosion. So guys, I'll give you a little, a little advice. I would look at possibly you know, I know nobody wants to think about going when they're in nursing school, going to long-term care or something like that. But 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of money to be made in that. There's a lot of money to be made in psych. So if you're wanting to get your nurse practitioner or your PA, you know, you may want to look at specializing in that because you're not going to be dealing with, you're going to be dealing with older people. Your workload may be a little high, but it's not going to be overly stressful. And it's not going to be like working the ER as a nurse practitioner or something like that. So, you know, in the next 10 to 15 years, I think the long-term care, geriatric care, that's going to be a huge, huge uh, boom for uh, nurse practitioners and nurses in general. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Think about, you know, think about what you want to do and do your research. Um, anyways, I got a shift tonight. I'm about to go in and that's pretty much it. That's all guys. See you tomorrow.